I think you would agree with me if I say the more custom rules or lint rules we introduce to a project, the better it gets. So it will bring some kind of consistency to your project. It makes it more maintainable. And also the quality of the code will increase. So in fact, uh, that's the reason we have the best practices, cust- uh, lean uh, rules from Dart team and Flutter team. You have them under your hand. However, there are some uh, limitations to those rules. You cannot add your custom rules. Or if you are a package author, for example, and you want to add some kind of rules, custom rules, it's not as easy as it would you would think you can do that. There are packages that it will help you to do, for example, analyze plugin, but um, maybe the developer experience is not the best. However, there is a package right now named Custom Lin, published by Invertase, done by Remy. So this package is pretty awesome that makes it easier to work with uh, defining custom rules or custom lint rules. So in this video, I'm going to jump into this package and show you how you can leverage this package into your project and add your custom lints. All right, let's actually jump into the custom lint and see what we can do with this package. This is actually very interesting. So I actually want to do everything from scratch that you use you get the whole idea around custom link and how you can leverage this package so first of all uh, so i'm gonna just go to a project in uh, invertase i'm just gonna uh, create like a folder here and let's name it let me make this bigger for you uh custom lint uh, custom lint example so I'm going to just go to custom lint um, example. There you go. So I'm going to just open this with VS Code. There you go. And everything is pretty empty, as you can see here, right? So what we're going to do here, we're going to just quickly create two packages. So. First of all, I'm just going to create a folder, um, an example. Let's name it uh, Flutter example. So there you go. So this is a Flutter package that, let's say, I'm going to use it, right? And another thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to just create Flutter. Actually, I can create a package with Flutter CLI, or I can use that with Flutter uh, with Dart package. So you can technically create something like Dart create dash T means here in this case. Let me make this bigger for you as well. Uh, dash T in this case means also like a template. And this is a package. And there we go. So you can go and, and actually create a package here. So to use custom lint, so you need to have a package. So and then you can add all of your lint custom rules lint, uh, under that package. But let's see how it's it's going to work. So I'm going to create a package. So just to make it a little bit simpler, right? And what I'm going to do now, I have actually right now uh, two, let's make this bigger. I have two folder here. So this is my lint and all the things here for the package. Well, technically, I don't need lib and test an example. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just delete this. And I will create a folder named bin under custom lint and a file name custom lint.dart. There we go. So now here is the far, uh, a, a file that we're going to start writing all of our uh, custom lint rules. But bear with me with that one. So let's create, um, this is a Flutter uh, example here in this case. Or, well, I'm, I'm just going to create a simpler package for now. Let's, let's call it my uh, Dart app. Just a very simple one. 
let's call it main.dart and what we want to do here so you're going to define your custom lint rules inside the package and in this package in public yaml file you need to in fact relay on uh, one or two packages so you can actually add that to dependencies custom lint builder is the one that you want inside this package you will add that to the uh, here and another one that you want is the analyzer because custom lint is based on the analyzer plugin okay and uh, there you go so now i have my dependency i just don't know why it's adding like that it's a bit weird but let's uh, make it uh, a bit nicer there you go. So now I have two dependencies. Uh, I have two dependencies here. So let me just remove this stuff. Maybe also move this stuff to down. So that is good. What we want to do is go into the custom lint. And uh, I need to start this, you know, uh, plugin but then how is you have start plugin function from custom lint builder package okay that's fantastic but that requires you to pass send port that's for isolated stuff and this is a plugin it's a class that um, you need to define okay but then how can you get that uh, send port it's easy so that's uh, passed to the main uh, function so let's get that and argument is also usually list of a string there you go so now i need to define my plugin well let's see how can i define that that's very simple so you define your awesome lint class or my awesome lint class which is going to extend plugin base okay that's good so now as simple as just passing an instance of this you know class so so are you are good to go right now so let's write some uh, custom lint here so one before i start i just want to mention the start plugin is very important here because it actually makes a whole a lot of stuff simpler you can technically use all of the things that i'm mentioning much harder with analyzer plugin with with like uh, a lot of you know other things that if you have already worked this package you know how difficult it could be at some point or frustrating but the start plugin is doing at least one thing that i really like is that it's it's converting transforming all of the logs to a log file which makes it super duper easy to debug but then um, you, you you bear with me you'll uh, understand that shortly but let's let's write one simple uh, you know a uh, custom uh, rule here uh, for example well to write rules you need to have a function here which is get uh, lins and that is going to have some kind of resolve uh, unit uh, uh, instance there you go and this is technically going to be an overread uh, that's good and it's going to actually return a stream uh, of um, lints okay that's pretty much it and you need to make this function uh, like as in a stream so far so good now I actually can write all lints here in fact I can yield all the lints here like as simple as yield and you can yield a lint well we get to this shortly but bear with me so you have this resolve unit you know this uh, resolved unit result which is technically the file that is uh, you know uh, resolving the ast for a single file as you can see that 
Well, that's a very good, uh, good one. It comes with a whole a lot of, you know, things, which we we'll get into that shortly. But um, let's uh, quickly name, uh, let's quickly name uh, this, to, to make it simpler, let's name it unit. Or actually, I can just make this unit. Okay. So uh, now, <clears throat> let's uh, find out what we want to do. Let's say I have this application or this Flutter example application. And when I create like some service file, whatever, the class name, that's a scenario that I want to follow, should be some service. And I cannot have two some two service. At the moment, you see that there is no problem with this. And even if I add like my um, analysis dot uh, underline option dot YAML file, so technically I can just copy this, <coughs> the whole thing. Well, actually, I can copy the whole thing here. Let's remove this. Yeah, if I even if I have this right now. And uh, uh, let me add also a pop spec.yaml file to this project. And let me just like copy and paste the entire thing. Let's say this is my Dart app. And uh, let's remove the rest of the stuff or except these two maybe. So <coughs> now, even if I go to this file, there is uh, no error. Like he literally, even if I use that, there's no error. But I want to make sure now in my project, this comes as an error. I cannot define two class, two public class, let's say here, or my uh, service name cannot have uh, a name like this. It should be as has a suffix with service because the file name is service or something like that. It's very, very like common, uh, you know, linting, uh, you know, formatting stuff when you're working uh, with a team, right? You want to be consistent. Well, that's good. Let's see how we can write that very easily here. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just go here and uh make sure that i can receive um all the files here so those the simplest thing i can do right now is i can just find out my uh, library my library uh, is is my project in this case so unit library element so this is going to give me as it says the element representing the library containing the compilation of unit well, that's good. So I have a bunch of things under that. So for example, I can get entry points, export names, libraries, identifier, imports, browser application, Dart, blah, 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 and so many other things here. And that is, that is a very, very nice thing to do. And the first thing I want, well, I want to make sure what is this, you know, path or the file that is analyzed. Like, Let's get the file pass, and that's going to be library dot. I think it's going to be source dot. Yeah, there we go. Well, or maybe it's actually uh, source dot full name, short name. What is full name? The return, the name that can be displayed to the blah, blah. Uh, long version of the name. Okay, that's good. So, that's the long name, and, and maybe that's the short name. That's actually file name, perhaps. But let's, uh, we, can, we can actually see how it works right now. I'm going to just look at this right now. I'm going to just now print this. Now, simple. Now, I want to use this, this custom lint, going to my package here. And then two things you need to do. First, you need to add custom lint. And secondly, you need to add my awesome lint from file 
and that is going to be my the folder that you define awesome links um okay so actually oh i, I okay this is actually path not file let's uh, let's go down so the path will be this one um <coughs> think this is correct what does it say oh okay because uh, if you are actually publishing this library you cannot have that's okay for now we don't uh, worry about it right now but uh, another thing that i can do i can say actually this is well depends uh, depending on the dev dependencies right so i can just move both of them to dev dependencies in a stat and that is going to be resolved right now as even that issue but that's good now i'm gonna go to this file you see that i have now two things coming here and well i need to get this uh, package well uh, both packages are now received so here everything is also received uh, that's good so now if i go to these files in fact uh, there will be um a log file here for custom lint where i can debug more so uh, what i can do though i have to go here and i have to just yield uh at least one lint so i'm just gonna go and yield a lint well let's see what kind of what kind of you know property or parameters are required so technically three parameters so we're gonna have code message and location but let's see how we can do that so the code is the custom lint code so i can just say what i want to do um so i want to say not more than one service class or only one public service class or actually this is a code i just need to only one class per file and the message would be only one public class is uh, permitted and the correction is move one of the classes to another file. Sounds great. And then another thing, and the last one that was is where do you want to show the? Where do you want to actually uh, show this error? And this is exactly for a file. We can actually show it on the very top. So I can say uh, the location is going to be unit, a unit that is analyzed and we have two options from offset and from lines i'm gonna i'm just gonna go from lines and say from line one and line one okay so now i have let's format everything now i have one one lint rule here what that's the thing whatever file right now goes to this lint rule you'll see these linting errors so now if i go here technically i will i would see uh, this error so i need to just one more time download this and i'm just gonna also restart my dot analyzer as well so make sure that everything is working uh, from scratch okay so now if i let's actually add also a main to this that's fine nothing comes because we forget the second step so the second step would be that you go through the analyzer here and then you need to add plugins and the plugin would be custom lint that's a plugin you need to add here and now if i go to this file and or maybe just jumping to the project that uh, let's actually download everything again 
And if I go to this file or any other files under this project, then, uh, you know, uh, the log file will be generated and it's coming. You look at this right now. Beautiful. It's very beautiful because then you open it up. You look at that. See, there are something that is coming here because you print it out. Let's take a look. Yes, I print out file name. This is a file name. And what is file path? Like the path, it's going to be like maybe the long uh, or full. Yes. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. File name and, and here. Well, what if we just put one print here and say file name and file path. Now, if I go back here, uh, to the lint, when when the lint, uh, like, let's close this. I will I need to get that again. When, um, look at this right now. It's actually coming right now like this. I have the file name and everything is coming here. So in fact, now my file is analyzed and it went through the linting that I've written. That is beautiful. However, we've, we've, we do nothing at the moment except we threw an error for everything. Like literally all Dart files that I open right now, they're going to have one error. And that is going to tell me, oh, only one. But that is not correct, right? Even here, oh, only one public class is permitted. That is not actually correct. So what we want to do now, we're going to go back here and we're going to make sure a bunch of things here. Let's see, we're going to have two rules. One is this one. Another one is we're going to make sure that the class name is correct. But let's let's go through the first one and fix the first one first. So, first of all, I want to make sure this lint is, um, in fact, um, happening when, <clears throat> when the file name... Um, Contains underlying service. Let's say the file name dot contains um, underlying service. Okay, only this file. <coughs> so now, if I go back here, I get this error on this file where it says some underlying service, but not this file anymore. That's a a good progress so far. Let's go back now. Let me remove this lint file because I don't print out anything right now. Even if any error happens, in fact, that is coming here. We'll get to that. Don't worry about it. So what I'm going to do right now, I just want to uh, make sure when, the, when we have all the classes and they are more than, more than two, then we're going to throw this error. Okay, that's good. How can we do that? Let's come back here. Just want to write uh, one simple rules here. Let's get all the classes. Final classes. And that is going to be from the library, like the unit that is the element that is, uh, you know, the file that is uh, analyzed. The, that um, top level, because... The top level elements are actually those classes. They are top level, right? I'm just going to go to the top level and I'm just going to filter everything with type. Okay. And make it to the list. Just want to create a list. Let me close this. A list of uh, type. But what kind of type? So that is something coming from... Uh, analyzer uh, uh, plugin. So that is a class element. There are a bunch of elements that you can find uh, on the analyzer, you know, elements folder. So you can take a look at this file. But what I'm really looking for, uh, looking for is this element. You can, for example, uh, have variable elements. You can have a bunch of other things. So, but I'm looking for classes right now. But that's very good. So now I have a list of classes. It's beautiful. So let's let's actually print out. Let's print out. See what we 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 get. So we get uh, here. 
Now I have a lint fire. If I open, and one thing here you notice, the log file is fantastic. This is something that sometimes it gets swallowed by, you know, analyzers. Sometimes you don't see these logs, but we print out, this package prints out to a log file. So you get, you even get all of these errors. You can simply come back and debug that. So now you get, I see, I, I get two here because I have two classes under uh, the service file, under this file. Well, correct. So what I'm going to do here, then I'm going to say if the length is more than one, then do this. Fantastic. So now if I go to this file, I should see this error. And if I remove that, there is no error anymore. No warning. Well, actually, uh, you can set it's this what kind of, you know, uh, severity it should be. Is it a, like, uh, let's go back here. Is it like a warning? I can actually add that as a severity. It's like it's an error info warning or something. So I can say, well, maybe this is a warning, right? So if I go back now to this file let's do that and that is coming as like a warning so now if i run the analyzer i get this warning so now i'm going to remove that so the first linting is resolved that is fantastic so now let's do um, a new one what do we want to do again so if the length is more than two just show this otherwise what do we want to do I want to go through each of these classes. So in fact, uh, well, we're forcing with the first one to remove everything. It should be only one class, but let's assume that we don't want, we're just going to go through all the classes. So I'm just going to say um, uh, for, for all class instance uh, in classes, what is this one? This is the classes that we just identified here. Let me remove this. Okay. It's on the identified here. Well, fantastic. So we're going to go here and just simply go down. And uh, I can say now if the class instance dot well, I have a bunch of things here. Is it an abstract? Is it a dark core enum? Like, core object, enum, you know, mixing, blah, blah. And, you know, a lot of things that you get from this instance. So I can say if this is, or the name, that contain service. Or, in fact, I would say ends with. So what I say here is that if it ends with service, it, and that, exclamation mark means if not i want to now uh, through an uh, like yield an error so just want to copy and paste the entire thing here so service class must end or suffix um yeah service class i can say service class name must end with service or something like that. It's just, you can make it simpler. Um, so I can now come say, if the file name ends with underline service, the class name must be service, must ends end with service. Well, that's good. But how can you fix that? The correction? Well, replace well here's a good thing here actually let's copy this to name final name class name let's say replace name to name service and where do you want to show that <coughs> that is interesting let's actually go back to the file now I see the error if the file name ends with service, the class must end with service. Okay, replace sum2 to sum2 service. Okay, 
let me rename this to some. But the problem is the error is coming under class. It's like the first step. And even if I have like, let's say a couple of function here, copy, two, three, four, five, six, seven, still the error is coming here, the very top, like the first line. That's something is wrong, right? So I just need to show it exactly under the sum. In fact, you get the location uh, from class instance. There you go. You get this location and you can come to here and get the location, uh, location dot start. It would be, oh, it's not actually location. Let's see. It's actually name lint location. That's what I'm looking for. This is the location of element name. That's what I'm looking for, actually. So that is going to be location dot start line. Fantastic. An end line. And it actually comes, if I go to the lint location from lines, I see there is actually a start and end uh, column as well. So I can give that precise column as well. Like I can say start column. So then here I do have start column and I do have end column. And the problem there here is that this is uh, required and what this is n up like nullable. So now I need to make sure either I should say, well, this is, for sure resolved, or I need to make sure I'm passing that here correctly. What I can do though, I can just do like this, for example. So uh, if they are null, just pass one. In this case, we really don't know. Okay, go up. Let's see what is looking right now. Uh, this is beautiful. Let me also make this a bit nicer. There you go. So now, this is the link thing I re I've written. If I go to this file again, look, look, the, the error, the, the warning message in the editor is coming right under the class name. That is fantastic. All right, so now, uh, go back here. I said this is a warning. Maybe this could be an error. If if it could be an error, then it just threw an like you know exception when you have your linking analyzer and stuff. So that's good. So I'm gonna just say this is an error. But the the thing here is that what we want to do, we want to. Isn't it beautiful if we can also add like a quick um, you know suggestion? Like if I now go back here and if I right click on that it just shows me one thing and if I just go to there is no quick fix available I think it's much better to just provide some kind of quick fix here but let's see how can we fix that so let's go back to this linting files and by the way you can always print out everything here and go back to these log files and look at the log files. The log files is beautiful. It's just giving you everything that you want, including the errors. You look at these errors. Very beautifully, you can look at these errors and find out what is wrong. So now I'm gonna go to this, uh, to this linting. What we wanna do here, we can actually write a quick fix. If I go to lint class, there is mm, one uh, property named uh, get analyze analysis error fixes. Okay, that's interesting because it's actually going to give me some, you know, indications that I can fix this as well. Let's do that. As you can see, this is going to be a function, a callback. And that is returning to you a lint 
here and that is going to be an stream. This was the definition of that. You look at this here, that's an stream and I and return and gives you the lint. Okay, fine. So first of all, you need to make sure you know uh, you need to define the um you know the these are the stuff that is actually from analyzer plugin. So this is something that you need to do here is we want to make sure we are in the same session, like the session that is already uh, analyzed. And uh, then we want to edit the file. And then we want to replace that particular things and write the new class. And exactly what I said I'm going to write the code for. But let's take a look at that. First of all, we need to get <laughs> a session. Okay, the session would be unit from top. You remember that is our unit is passed, the, the, the unit that is passed. Session is under that unit. So this is a return session used to compute this result. Okay, that's nice. So now I have a switch session. I need to I need to um, create an instance of change builder. Okay, change builder is going to be change builder, but that's a problem because this actually class comes from um, analyzer plugin. Uh, some files that is not really exposed so i can i need to import that uh, myself it's going to be package dart analyzer uh no sorry analyzer plugin uh let's see if i pronounce that correctly that's a plugin and then i'm gonna just have there you go protocol and then I have protocol generated. I think it's it. That's it. Let's see if it's fixed. Uh, yeah, or maybe not. There's actually one more thing that I can try here. It's actually protocol, maybe all protocols. Let's see if it's fixed that. No, and then I need to imported from common there's another one so here is maybe this one oh oh wait 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 actually none of them so these are actually coming from analyzer utilities um yeah there you go this is this is something that comes from a little bit of experience and working with analyzer plugin if you have not done that don't worry about it just bear with me and use this utilities i think it's you yeah there you go and then you're gonna have this um change builder and then you're gonna have this change uh, builder change builder core dot dart there you go there you go now i have my change builder here resolved fine but the change builder if i look at that right now it's accepting analysis session that I I told you, and that is the session that we just defined on top, the unit session. So let's make it simpler. I'm just going to remove this and pass it here. So now I have my change builder. And then the second thing I need to do, I need to tell to the change builder what to do. I, I would say that the change builder dot, if you look at the change builder, it's just going to give you a bunch of method, add dart file edit. Add generate file edit, add YAML file edit, copy, has blah blah. And I want to go through the file edit. And if you look at this right now, and I think this is an async, yeah. So you need to wait for that. Okay, a wait. So now it needs a path. If I look at this here, it needs a path, and that's a path to the file that we had here. That's the file that was analyzed. So I'm just going to pass that here. And then, then it gives me a builder. And it's actually file edit builder here. Let's rename it. Nice. 
So now I have a builder, but what can I do with this builder? If I look at this builder right now, I can do delete, insert, replacement, simple insertion, replacement, and write, and format, and so many other things. Let's uh, experiment with replacement because I want to replace that, you know, uh, class. All right. But now it's giving me another thing. It gives me, it, it says I need a source range. Like where is that range? So if we look at that here, let's go back. This is the range we want to have, like from here to here. We're going to replace this with something else, right? Now let's go back to my custom lint. So I'm going to just have a source range. And I, it's going to, import this from analyzer it says you need to tell me where is the offset and the length all right so these are the things that i can actually get from the class instance so the class that we are going to replace so this is the class instance and i think there is an offset here name offset probably or not here. In fact, the location we already defined, there is an offset on the location, I think. There you go. You can say this is um, <clears throat> a location offset. And there is also second parameters that I need to pass is the length of that. And that's the um, location dot length. Both of them are here right now. And the offset here in this case, well, I'm pretty sure I will receive the location. So the offset I know. So I think it's pretty safe to pass, uh, to have this like 100% as not nullable. So there you go. <coughs> All right. So now I told where I want to change, but I didn't say what I want to do with that. So that's going to be this builder. So this is going to be my editor builder. So my editor builder here in this case, I'm just going to say, if I write on that, I see what I want to do. I want to just maybe select, select here, write, write classic relation, file, improve, and so many other things that I can do. And in fact, what I want to do, I would just want to write something on that. That's going to be my new name class. And so the new name class is this one, right? So let's define it somewhere top. Um, final new uh, final new class name, and let's have it like that. And then everywhere where we have this, uh, we can use it this one. And then here I can say new name class. So far, so good. So I've written that pretty well. So now I can, I can now, I know what I want to do. This is all the things that I want to do. And the last thing I have to do here, as you see, this is going to yield analyzer, um, analysis error fixes from analyzer plugin. So I don't know what it is, but what I know is that the analysis error fixes, that's the one I need to yield from here. So then, in fact, I go to like, here's my get. Uh, and then here, I'm just going to yield analysis fixes. That's fine. So that is, that is uh, going to be actually imported from analysis. So I'm just going down again here to analysis plugin. And that is importing from protocol and protocol. I think it's protocol. Uh, I think it's protocol um, generated. Let's try. There you go. Now, if I look at the analysis error fixes, then it says uh, you need to pass me the error. Okay. That's an analysis error, but I don't know that error. So, I mean, what I can do 
that's uh, what I can do. I can actually ask, ask like, this is my lint. Let's uh, look at the function. I get the lint. So the lint here is giving me as analysis error function. So this is, in fact, going to convert the lint into an analysis plugin analysis, uh, analyzer plugin analysis error. Fantastic. So you just need to pass this technically. And what is the fix? That is fix. And fix usually in analysis error fixes is an array of priority source changes. Okay. So then in fact, I need to have a priority source change here. Nice. But what is this priority source change? Let's take a look. It accepts a priority, a priority of a change. And uh, it says zero is the lowest. All right. And the change, which is a source change. Nice. My source change, though, what is it? It's actually coming from change builder. This is something that I'm creating. Well, let's continue doing that. So I'm just going to have the priority zero and the change builder dot. If I say that, then I have the source change here already. That is the source of change from, in fact, here. Oh, very nice. Let's see what will happen right now so far. If I now go back to some services, I get this linting error. I now get this quick fix. Look at that. Quick fix. Or in fact, I can just, in Mac, I can just say option command. Well, something is coming here, but it seems to be empty. Um, let's see. Well, actually, it changes, but it's empty. I need to give it some name. Let's go back here. Um, to give that a name, I can just say, I think, a message. And that could be um, replace. Well, in fact, that could be this one. Or just a little bit simpler. Replace to this. Re replace to this. Okay. Okay, so now let's go back to the service. I will get some kind of, okay, I don't, yeah, I got this error or this warning. Look at that, replace to some service. And now if I click, it will replace it to a service. That is awesome. And what you've seen right now, it's super duper simple just because of the package custom lint. So just going to remove this. You still get the exact same, you know, error on that. You just want to try out the location. This is fantastic. So, I mean, technically what I can do, I can just copy and paste this to my Flutter example. Just want to show you like it, it's going to work. It doesn't matter it's, if it's a Flutter project or it's a Dart project. Go to dependencies. And you're going to have these custom links and the, my awesome links. Fine. So let's see. I just want to, I just want to go to the leap folder. So going to go and say some service dot dart. And then some. That's it. So now here, let's download this. Uh, package, make sure that it's uh, downloaded to have dependencies. So now if I go to analysis, so let's uh, actually go to linter. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to copy everything from here. It's going to be analyzer plugin custom lens. That's a plugin custom lens. Fantastic. And now I have created this file under my Flutter project. And now, so I just need to make sure everything is downloaded properly. Analysis here. Okay, sounds everything is fine. Now I should uh, receive some kind of, well, I'm just going to go and make sure I have like at least two, three of this to make sure the positioning or uh, the location of the warning is also working. 
So to make sure everything is fine, I'm just going to restart analysis server. And uh, there you go, it's analyzing. And now, there is, okay, no, that's fine. That's, that's fine. That's, everything is looking fine. There you go. So now if I go to the file, I see that it says, all right. So in fact, in your package, if the file name ends with underline service, the class name must end with service. So replace some to some service. So then uh, option and enter or quick fix. And there you go. And it's still your Flutter project right now. You have all the rings. So you know, now you can go ahead and define everything that you want. And this is fantastic. So now you have a simple package, custom links, which enables you to create your custom package with all of your custom links rules that you can either share with everyone or possibly you can also use it under your project. Whether it's Flutter or Dot doesn't matter, but you can have way better, more and better consistent, let's say, linting, uh, you know, warnings, errors, and, and informations for project and all of your developers. Please go ahead and give it a try, custom links. I hope this uh, tutorial is uh, helpful to you. You can find, I'm sure you will um, have a lot of other ideas to do with this package. Please leave me a comment and let me know what else uh, do you want to do with this package or if you want to do something and you don't know how to do it with this package, leave a comment and let me know. Or you can reach me out on social media, Twitter or LinkedIn and let me know. I will create other tutorials for you and uh, for, you know, different uh, scenarios that you want me to do for you. With that said, see you next time. <laughs>